I actually just because I was doing another um, a recording for work and I had a green screen and they were talking about how my camera was, was really red because of the green screen behind me. And I was like, didn't even know that was a, a yeah. thing. So that's that's good to know as well. This is On Camera, On Brand, a show for professionals who want to look good on camera, but don't have the time or expertise to turn their office into a Hollywood studio. In each episode, Rob Rusher uncovers how professionals can get the most from their home or office setups. If you invest the time to share your stories on camera, you should be on brand. Welcome to On Camera, On Brand. I'm your host, Rob Rusher, and today we're here to help my friend Tim improve his home video setup. So Tim works full-time for Amazon AWS, and he spends a lot of his time in virtual meetings and conferences. Additionally, he wants to create videos for YouTube and hopefully one day host his own workshops. He knows he needs to amp up his setup, but not really sure where to start, so that's what we're getting into today. So Tim, thanks for coming on the show. No, thanks for having me, Rob. Yeah, man. So did I get that right? That's pretty much what we're looking to do, right? You have your on calls pretty much all day with work. So you're trying to look the best you can. And then you're mm -hmm. also looking to maybe open up more opportunities being on camera. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, a lot of what I do is like one to one or one to many conversations. And with so many people being remote, I think it's really important to kind of be on camera so that I show that I'm being present to the meeting. Um, and I think, you know, it has two benefits. I think it benefits the customer, but it also benefits myself. It does help me kind of stay focused and stay on task. Uh, yeah, I just, I want to make that experience a little bit more professional. Yeah. And I love you mentioned for yourself too, because I feel it's a hard thing to say in ROI terms, but even myself, you know, with coming to the podcast, you, you have a lot more confidence when you're looking good, you know, not mm -hmm. just like your setup, you feel like it's lit well and all that. So I, I think that's a big, big part. When it, when it comes to being on camera, what are some of the biggest issues you're facing or challenges, whether it's tech or, or yourself or? You know, I think when it comes to the day-to-day -day conferences and meetings, it's ensuring that I'm in frame and that I'm lit or that people can see me because sometimes that as the sun goes down, I, I get more of a, a gloomy look. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it is it is a little distracting, too. You know, if you come on camera and you, no one can really see you, I also, uh, you know, leads into people being able to hear me and understand me. Uh, you know, I talk a lot and I have to be very specific about what I say. And while the Internet's one thing, you know, just not being able to hear everything that I'm saying is clearly is important or having a too much distracting background noise from from being in the home office that's true yeah i think a lot of us especially those with kids uh can can relate to the <laughs> the challenges of noise and and i know you've upgraded your microphone already which we'll we'll get into i feel like that's probably the first thing people should start is with getting clean audio and just like mm -hmm. you said you know it's you can i think even now you can get away with maybe not looking lit well the sun goes down not great but yeah if, if they're not hearing you well it's it's hard really to get yeah. your point across i feel like um, absolutely and in terms of yourself is there anything you're not liking when recording yourself like or that you're that makes you nervous or maybe a problem you're hoping to get better at perhaps i think i just need to be a little bit more rehearsed in in how i am using all of my equipment um whether it's the physical hardware or you know my powerpoint presentation and being able to talk through my talk track and ensure that everything's in line and that i'm on pace but also um you know just being able to record and have permission to share my screen and share my camera and, and do all those all those things as well and not have those long gaps because everyone's time is is valuable and i want to be able to get to the point yeah no totally that's that's great so, okay, I mean, I think we'll just jump in and just a disclaimer for those listening. We have had a chat already, so I have a little jump start on your space, and I can see, for those watching the video portion, I can see you've already changed the frame up a little bit, which is great. Mm -hmm. So we'll kind of kind of skirt over that. That was the first step. So for me, when I'm looking at a space, the first thing I want to do is just take our webcam, video camera, whatever we're using, and kind of look around and see where we can either get the most depth, where we can create a backdrop behind us, you mm -hmm. know, to easily 
gain some interest or even if we want to have a place to set up a backdrop so so we did all that why don't we just start with kind of the current setup gear wise you have if you want to quickly go over just the type of camera you're using if you have any lighting the microphone you're using and we'll kind of start with that yeah absolutely so after we chatted i actually was able to find a camera it's just a asus 1080p like usb camera so nothing crazy fancy um but it has like a swivel mount on it so i could actually orient it a little bit better where my older camera didn't really do that and it, i think that because it has a different lens it, it was able to kind of give that to me already so sometimes just just changing where you put it on your monitor has enough of a impact oh yeah to like get a lens <laughs> absolutely and so with that with that webcam do you have many options in software to like change anything or affect the settings or is it kind of an auto you just plug it in and go yeah it's pretty auto i i did uh look to see if I, there was some third party software but because it you know i have to plug this into my computer i, I can't really use a lot of the the cool things so so yeah it's it's really just plug and play yeah okay so we got that set up and then obviously you have a nice microphone i can tell yeah i didn't really think that was going to make a big difference this is actually the razor i, I just forgot it but it, it was only like 70 bucks it, it actually wasn't that expensive it was like i think the cheapest one they sell and i'm surprised especially when i record myself the difference in just like almost the like either background noise or, or like just not being able to hear my words clearly i feel like i hear my shirt moving, you know, I hear all that stuff um, when I have different types of headphones on. Yeah, no, it's it's amazing. I mean, obviously microphones can go <laughs> into the thousands of dollars, not so much for the podcasting world and, and what anyone would need being on camera, but it is amazing how much, you know, just a little less than $100 will get you from, if you're just using your laptop speaker, even earbuds, which, which sometimes I use when I'm on the road and have to do it quick, but... Yeah, there's definitely a difference with with the real microphone. Um, yeah, and I, I have these and I have the earbuds and, and both of those still like this is just a much cleaner sound. Yeah, so. no, that's that's great. I mean, it's cool because you already have that. You Like I said, sound would be one of the first things I tackle after figuring out our best kind of framing and mm -hmm. setup. And, and the one thing I'll throw out there, too, and, and I'll throw a link uh, into the description, but uh, there's this company Plexicam. And they create this really cool product that just, it's like little plexiglass. It's real simple, easy. Mm -hmm. You can travel with it. And it will go right over your laptop, your monitor, and then you can mount in your webcam. And they mm. have different sizes for the webcam. So that could be a cool option for you too. Because I feel like with all the headroom you have, you know, and kind of seeing your ceiling, I understand mm -hmm. that from that angle, if we were just to tilt down, you might see your desk your belly, the chair, you know, it's like <laughs> might be tilting down too much to remove that, yeah. but something like a plexi cam would allow you to have it right mm -hmm. in front of the monitor. And then you can use some scripting software, something like that. So that would be a cool thing to look into. And I think sometimes framing just allows people to see you, you know, and focus on you and not look at everything else, else going on. So yeah, I, I think for framing wise, I, I love what you have in the background. So that lamp in the back, one thing mm -hmm. I would toy with is um, if you do, and I believe you said you did like an RGB bulb, but is that the one yeah. that got is broken? Did you say? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. But it, I, I, I agree. Once I set that back up, I, I think using that with to match either the, the colors that I have here yeah. might be... Yeah, and another thing idea. to think about, you know, when when you're and and just going off the show name here, on camera, on brand, it, it's always a good. Your background can be another great choice to either bring in your own branding, whether it's colors mm -hmm. or even a client you're you're pitching. I know. Quick side story: I've worked with GNC a lot. You know, the vitamin mineral place workout supplements and their colors are obviously red 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 and there was a time when i was doing a lot of work with them and i had a i had my virtual office for them set up in my basement on my camera cart and i had little red lights you know for the cement walls and they loved it because it felt like a commercial i'm not saying anyone needs to go that hard into their virtual setup but everyone on that call was paying attention to me and i got the job so it's you know, any of those tools. So I love that you have a bulb like that. I highly recommend anyone put a type of lamp. I'm, as you can see, I have a wall behind me that has nothing. And that's because I'm about to shoot another episode of going from that to something a little better. But 
Nice. Love the lamp thing, and, and we can play with the dimming of that, just having a nice glow. And the nice thing mm -hmm. about having a lamp in the background is you can change the color slightly to add a little depth, and it's not going to change like your skin tone. With webcams, we'll have to watch out if it's all auto, if it starts to try to attract to that color temperature, you know, for the white balance could get weird. Yeah, but... I actually just, because I was doing another um, a recording for work, and I had a green screen, and they were talking about how my camera was, was really red because of the green screen behind me. And I was like, didn't even know that was a, a yeah. thing. So that's, that's good to know as well. What we'll do, I won't, I won't do it right here. And if I find anything, I can update the links or put something so others that are listening might have something. I'll get the information of your webcam. And let me just look around and see if there's any software. Because it would be okay. cool to, to be able to tweak a few things, such as white balance. And that will make a big mm -hmm. difference on, on skin tone. So if you're cool with it, I think you know we should jump right into a little lighting. So I know yeah. you said you had that LED panel. You were working with your lights that are in there in a mm -hmm. window light. Um, so I would think if I were you, I would look at the LED and if we could try, and I don't know your space physically with the desk, it's, but- Yeah, it's like right here. Yeah, you have it there. Is there any way to get it on the same side as the window? Cause I'm thinking we would actually open up those curtains on your okay. windows to see what that looks like. And then just turn off your overhead lights and just see what we can do with what you have with the window and your key light. Um, okay. Do you yeah. You want to I, ha I have the I have the stand right here. Yeah, let's I try that out. Um, so sorry for those that are listening. I'm sure we will just quickly cut through this uh, segment as we're making quick adjustments. But um, what I'm having do Tim do is put his light on the same side of the window. What that does is allows the window and the sunlight that's coming outside to do what it's naturally doing, and then his light will be right in front of his face to kind of help wrap that window light it helps make it look a little more natural and then he doesn't have to worry about turning on overhead lights the overhead lights will produce a little bit more of your raccooning which is the dark circles under your eyes um, and then you're balancing multiple color temperatures so we'll see how tim's doing with that light when he's done and maybe we can yeah see so already your the color and stuff is looking better and i feel like okay. you don't have a lot of that sheens how what percentage is that light at oh uh, it's it's like i think is it max out. okay and yeah. can you bring it a little closer to center so it's almost like yeah. a little closer to your face so like that yeah okay so We're it's that it's, it's like it's like here i could probably i could bring it down more right now i have it angled off the wall yeah the nice thing about pushing off the wall I'm, I'm glad you said that is that you get a softer light if you want we let's try it right at your face without bouncing it off the okay. wall we'll probably have to end up dimming it down quite a bit um but it'd be interesting to see how that is so that's yeah and i could tune that down let's see where is it on this side i think oh well, that's actually changing the bright the white the white oh yeah side. yeah well, kind of do daylight and then, okay and then i can turn it down if i find the switch yeah here it is oh no hold on sorry that's all right yeah lots of switches on these lights it's it's hard to figure out because i would say it's something like that and then can we but turn on your it? backlight just a little bit even if the mm -hmm. tint's off just to kind of see what that's looking like and if you don't have an rgb bulb for those listening another trick you can do is you put in a regular incandescent bulb that and a dimmer and then you can kind of dim the brightness so yeah, what happens if we dim that? Are you able to dim the bulb down, or is it locked no. on all the settings? Okay. Yeah. But I no think worries. I, I actually think we could turn it. I actually think turning this but having it wider made more sense. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, and even with your key light that we're working with, since you have the one, I I would if there's a way to even bring it a little like almost right behind your camera, but a little to your right, if that makes sense. Yeah. The only reason is, why I can't is the um, the the ceiling here. Yeah. It, it okay. Interferes with the ceiling. Well, here. yeah. Let's flip it around and then and then blast it in the ceiling the way you had it. I think that was looking the best. And it definitely, definitely with webcams, I feel like the more light you throw on you, the better, because it can actually mm -hmm. expose that. So see, like, I like what it's doing. I just feel like it has such the harsh hit now on what we're calling our key side. Right. Um, 
So I could change. And I wish there was a way on your, your camera we could adjust that a little bit. And then I think, I, let's see if I... Is that a yeah. Little see, bit so what I'm thinking too, and I know we talked a little bit of budget. You were you were saying you, you're willing to put a little bit of money here and there. And that's why mm -hmm. I feel like going through all of this first with what you have... And then we decide, I think having something like a plexi cam so you can mount that camera right in front of your monitor. And it's real mm -hmm. easy to take it off. So you can take it off and as soon as you wanna you know, go back to recording, throw it on. And then maybe even, and I'll do some research to suggest, but maybe even like another small LED light. Um, okay. There's different ones. Like I use this brand Aperture MCs or MC is the type of light. The brand is Aperture and you control it on your phone and stuff. And they're mm. just these little like, things and i actually have two just on my camera with the light additional um oh, okay. because as you can see you have this nice soft like what we call the key light coming from mm -hmm. that side but i'd love to then just push another little bit of light at your eyes you know lift mm -hmm. lift underneath your eyes and it'll help wrap that so we'll probably add that to your to your shopping cart there as well <laughs> and there's different versions you know there's depending on what you want to film in the future we could look at a light that can be used for that also you know so it's not like you're okay. just buying a light for this and you can't use it elsewhere there's different like tube lights like a little two foot tube light that you can mount right on top mm -hmm. of your monitor or behind it a little bit just to mm -hmm. help wrap this and be soft or like another like squared light or even another light like you have and then mm -hmm. just bounce it off maybe it's behind your monitor bouncing off your your yeah. wall and, and ceiling again. And that's just, again, it's just wrapping. Cause that's what I'm doing here too. I mean, I have a little bit of the window on my side open to help with my background. I have mm -hmm. my main panel here and then I have two little uh, LED panels right on top of my camera. So it just helps give a soft wrap here. I mean, I have my monitor arm. I, I bet you I could connect this to the, to the arm and, uh, and have it yeah, bounce off. Yeah, it's like just that idea. kind of playing yeah. with it too. Like as you can kind of see as it's pushing there and you could tell like if you dim that backlight a little bit mm -hmm. more, you could almost, what I like to do where I start when I'm, especially with like interviews with backlights and practicals we call them, is I'll just dim it down until I can see the texture of the shade. Once I can see okay. the texture of the lamp shade, you know, a little bit and it's not so blown out, I kind of hold it there and then I'll tweak as needed. Okay. So. Yeah, but but dude, I'm loving that, and I think if if we're looking to get another light again, not we're not talking thousands of dollars. Yeah, here. Just, yeah. We'll find something nice on Amazon that has a good color profile, something that's soft. Maybe it has a little soft box type of thing that just pops on there real easy. And then that's something you can also use when you're doing your YouTube videos and mm -hmm. and other stuff. And if you're filming products or anything like that, more more lights are always better. I think. <laughs> Yeah. Until until absolutely. you have too many lights and it slows you all down. So, um, <laughs> and so for your for your microphone, I mean, did you have any questions with that? I mean, again, I'm I'm I am personally pretty amazed that for seventy dollars you're sounding <laughs> the way you're sounding. I think you clearly know how to position it. A lot of people either put it kind of. I mean, ideally you do want it here, but since right. it's a video podcast, I always I'm like, well. It so that was my question. Enough, you know? Like, yeah. should I have it? Should I have it? Like, uh, I mean, keep it almost a little in frame. Ooh, yeah, that's sounding way better. That's even sounding okay. better. Yeah. I mean, I don't mind personally. And again, I think it's dealer's choice and what you're comfortable for, especially in this environment. We're doing a video podcast, seeing a microphone. And honestly, I think the road, I mean, there's a lot of cool looking microphones, but yeah. I don't mind seeing this setup because of what we're doing. I've done on other meetings and pitches where I would actually... It's called boom out. So I'll have like a little arm on a stand and the microphone that's like here, but out of frame. Okay. That uh -huh. might be a little uh -huh. overkill for now, but you know, <laughs> when you get to the point of doing uh, workshops, maybe a wireless lav, if you're trying to move around in the space or do something, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or if you're answering questions, you're a little bit more interactive in the space. It might be nice to have, you know, a microphone overhead versus mm -hmm. like here blocking you. Um, well, I, I did have the, the thought of putting it next to my, my camera up here instead of having it down on the desk. but Yeah, you could see how that works. I mean, and again, knowing, and, and send me a link to the microphone, I'll look. So okay. each microphone kind of has its own pattern, they call it. It's the way it picks up sound, like cardioid, hypercardioid. There's unidirectional, omnidirectional. And that just refers <laughs> to like the pickup direction. Okay. And, and more basically just getting down to brass tacks. Where does your mouth need to be, basically? And that depends okay. on the microphone design. So we'll look at that if it's, you know, 
for this kind of microphone, the way to the design is, is it's best almost like up and over in it oh, okay. versus being back. And some microphones, they have a little bit more, I guess you could say flexibility where with where you're speaking. However, it would pick up more background noise. And and I'm guessing since you're, you notice immediately the background noise and other stuff being out, it's at least a cardioid, if not a hypercardioid, which mm-hmm. would mean it's just even a more sharper angle. I, I, <laughs> I, I, for, I mean, I'm, I do know my audio, but, but compared to some of the sound recorders I work with on the commercials and movies, they, they, they have all this stuff memorized. But basically, I guess the lesson is each microphone, there's an optimum way to get the sound. And I think you're very very close to that. I would play okay. with how close you can get your microphone without covering your whole mouth so people, you know, can still see you. Right. But when you pulled it right there, it did make a, a, a big difference. I could probably get it just a little bit closer, especially when I'm standing at my desk to do my yeah. presentations. Okay. So do you do a lot yeah. of standing presentations then too on camera? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, and, and again, I think that the, having something to mount your camera in different heights then for sure. Mm-hmm. So when you stand, you can still keep, you know, the background, how you have it in those frames and, and, you know, adjust the light a little bit, but, um, yeah, dude, that's, that's great. Um, yeah. And keep c- play with the mic. I would say too, there's, um, you know, on any of the apps and we can work with it too, if there's a way you can hear yourself, you know, as you're talking mm-hmm. so you can hear the difference, that's a great way to find, you know, the uh the perfect place for it and then just kind of play around and then so i guess the the last thing we'll just cover quickly is is in terms of like wardrobe makeup any of those things i guess first i can start if you had any questions with it and then i could kind of go into what i think you know clothing wise and stuff might might make a big difference too and maybe you never thought about that either so i've actually never even thought about it (laughs) it is it is funny you know um that you don't, and I think maybe just being, you know, guys that don't think about makeup are not in social circles where we're talking about makeup. We, we kind of lose that. Um, and part of what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring on hopefully more than one, but makeup artists I work with on, on the films here, uh, mm-hmm. and just, you know, take all the knowledge they have and all the crazy <laughs> stuff they're able to do and be like, okay, how do I just make myself look a little better? You know? Yeah. Um, yeah. So clothing wise, you know, one thing I would look at is with your background and stuff too, I think like any solid color, I don't know if you're usually wearing like a button up kind of collared shirt, if you're more casual on the calls, Mm -hmm. but um, I'm definitely a fan of color. That's why I wore green, especially since my background's a little boring right now, just gives a little interest. Um, But, but for me, I definitely like the collars that are a little casual. I think you should feel comfortable with what you're wearing. Don't dress so nice that you feel, (laughs) you know, you can't, you can't be who you are, but I definitely just try to take an extra minute or two when I'm picking out my clothes and just thinking, okay, what would look good with the background I have? And then also think, okay, who am I talking to today? You know, who's the Mm -hmm, audience? mm -hmm. With the makeup, you know, the easiest thing you can do, at least some of the stuff I know, is like a little bit of face cream before. A little bit of lotion does help. And if you're worried about sheen, you know, having a little shininess. Um, yeah, and again, yeah. as you can see with the soft um, light, you can see how much softer. <laughs> yeah, but but notice how much different you look now without the those overhead lights. Because the yeah. overhead lights there, you did definitely have the sheen. And right. now with bouncing a soft light, it's it's you don't even really see it. Um mm-hmm. So, yeah, I, I do a little lotion before and then just kind of pat dry just real softly with a paper towel if there's any sheen, you know, if there's any mm-hmm. shininess before. But we'll we'll get more on the makeup as I <laughs> as I talk more. Um, but but Tim, I mean, honestly, I think I think you're in a really good spot. I'm excited to see, you know, getting that light in the background working yeah. for you. We'll do another we could do another follow up and update with it. And uh, I will send you some lights that I recommend along with the link to the Plexi cam. Yeah. Do you have any other questions at this point or anything else you were thinking about? I, think, I honestly, I think just being able to move that light down and have it on this side versus the opposite side made a huge difference. I'm glad you thought of it. And then I think for the mic, like playing with the placement of it, because of course I'm also worried about it picking up my keyboard as I'm trying to take notes. So yeah. that's another thing I'll, I'll definitely play with. Yeah, and there's different arms and, and solutions uh-huh. there with that and, and stands as well. And, and even when you leaned in, I could tell tell a difference. So 
I'd yeah. say I'd say my last note on the audio is open up any of the softwares you use and have it so you can hear yourself or even record mm-hmm. and play back. I know the Zoom app does that, and, and mm-hmm. any of your video conferences, I believe, will let you test it that way. And that way you can play around because even when you leaned in, it sounded very crisp and clean. So I think you can find okay. a sweet spot and make that thing sound a lot a lot more expensive <laughs> than what it was. So that's <laughs> awesome. great. To complete Tim's on-camera setup, we needed one more light. It can be challenging to make webcams look good, but the trick is to get yourself a bit brighter than the background. Without manual control over the camera settings, we needed the background lights to be dimmable. In this final part of the episode, I talked to Tim about the upgrades we made and the impact it has had at work and with his personal brand. Yeah, so if you just dim that backlight just so you see it glow. But do you want me to dim all the, all the overhead lights as well? I would turn I mean... off all the overhead lights okay, and then and then that. just dim that one down, the backlight. That... All right, so that so all my overheads are off, and then I have this Sweet. one in the back. Yeah, and then then I dim- can I can change this. I can make it a little bit. Whoops! I can make it a little bit dark. Darker. You go like that right in there. Hold that for a second. That could be kind of cool. And then, and then what is your? You had the two key lights. So we had one light that was bouncing against the wall towards the window, and then we got you that other Elgato key light air. Correct. Right. So I I'm actually only using the air because okay. the other one was just too finicky to. To I have up all the time. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, let me switch over to that because I can okay. make that. I can make this one really warm. The problem, the pro, the thing is like this is like max, and I have mm-hmm. it right behind my camera. And if I if I bring it all the way down to like this is three percent, like if I go like nine percent, it's still like it, I have to keep it very low in order for it to work. And I've thought, well, maybe if I flip it the other way. But I haven't you could, I haven't played with that much yet. But is it because it's too bright for you when you look at the screen? Is no, the it's issue, like or? it like bounces off of my my head. Yeah, but... let me go up a little brighter on it, just a tad okay. bit. Yeah, hold. Let me see what that looks like if you're looking at screen. See, I'm digging that better just because okay. I'm getting your eyes out of it. Um, okay. And the other thing you can do that can help either if you go to like any anywhere that sells like art supplies even grocery stores you know those like poster boards whether it is Mm -hmm. just a white poster board i mean i know it's nice to keep the desk clean but having something white can help like you know bounce up a little bit in the eyes right in here too yeah i've thought about doing that with like of course i i have dark mode on on everything i do so (laughs) but if i go to like like let's see if i can get just a word document up and I also think on the Elgato, I'd like to see it in the daylight temperature balance so it, it balances the so this window. So is like with a Word document out. up. Okay, yeah. I see, um, yeah. That's good to see. Then, do you have those up usually? You probably have stuff up. While I have you're... something, yeah. Yeah, so that's good. Let's keep it like that so we see it. And then with the Elgato on either on the app or I don't know if you have the desktop app installed, you can, if you want to change that color to daylight. Yeah, so I can do that like that. I have it on yeah. my phone. Do cool. that, and then let's turn it up the brightness just a little bit. Right. And then turn the, um, let's try the white balance more at like a 4,000. So kind of not so, t- like, well, yeah, right in there. So 4,000. Yeah, because these like... lights also, you can tell as you change the temperature, it actually got a lot brighter. Yeah. There's a sweet spot. So oh, most of these okay. have like they have just an even amount of daylight and tungsten LED chip. So as you dim it, there's a point where all of them are kind of on. Oh, um, oh, okay. So I that mean, I'm liking that look there too. I mean, you're popping from the background a little bit with your webcam. Can you tilt down just a touch, mm-hmm. just to kind of remove the headroom a little bit? Yeah, let's see how that's looking. Let's see here. Yeah, and then go a little to the. I guess right. So that way you don't have to see. Yeah. Like in the night. Yeah. I think would be a good thing too. I'm loving all this and especially uh I, I wish I had the the first version on a screenshot. I should have brought that I up know. to see. But but no, man, I mean it's like I'm I'm looking at you, you see the space, and I think there's a there's a limit, I feel like, of how good you can get a webcam to look, you know, and you're mm-hmm. you're there. I think it looks Great. Mm-hmm. The one thing, and I'll I'll send you a link too. But the Plexi Cam, I think we talked about that last mm-hmm. time. It's like the Plexi Glass. They they have a really nice design that can go over the monitor, and that way you could bring it down. We won't see your floor. 
Mm, and then okay. and then that way it's just it just is a little bit more pleasing. It almost looks like I'm standing, you know, with you or sitting there with gotcha. you in the room. I think the one thing that I would like, I mean, because I upgraded the mic and I and you know, you're we were able to get me the uh uh Elgato light and then I have <laughs> these lights. So I feel like I have good options there, but my my webcam I still feel like is a critical vulnerability for me. Like I I was looking actually because I got some Logitech peripherals and they actually have an app where you can tune the frames on their webcams so that's on my my to get list down the road is that like so a I think free app would... or something you have yeah. to pay for okay cool it's a yeah. free app but it only works with their webcams so it allows you to like like i i like we talked about like having it just to like the from wall to like you know whatever so. Yeah, and just even punching in, and I don't know how yeah. often you use your phone while you're working, or if you don't want to use that as a camera, but that's a great option too. Mm -hmm. And there's even mounts that same company PlexiCam makes like a mount for your phone to go over, and then yeah, there's apps you can buy, and then have full control over the manual settings and zoom in and stuff. But yeah. how has it been so far? Any like differences? Any of the is it working out so far? Like the changes we made and adding the light compared? Or? Oh. Absolutely. I, I use the light all the time and, and getting my, my other lights set up. Um, I, I definitely I'm going on camera a lot more during during meetings and, you know, you helping me like figure out wh where to position the mic and and things like that. I definitely have noticed I don't have to repeat myself as much. Like I feel like the flow of conversation is much more natural because people are able to understand me. There's no hesitation to ask questions because I'm not like this wired signal coming in that's crackled and people that get frustrated with. So yeah, I think it takes a lot of that like anxiety out of jumping on a call and having a, a technical conversation. Yeah. It feels a little bit more personal. Probably right. feels more like you're in the room. Now with these conversations, are you with multiple people ever, or is it just mostly one-on-one -on -one conversation? Oh no, it's mo it's mostly one to many. Yeah. Mostly okay. Many. So that is important than, than sound. So you don't have 10 people asking you to, repeat yourself exactly or then or then maybe they put it in chat and then like my colleague has to pick it up or i have to monitor chat as well you know because some people don't want to like break up the, the flow so they'll be like oh what was that he said or what you know and then i actually have a, a webinar that that i'm giving this afternoon so I'll be using all the stuff that, that nice well good we got you. i'm glad we got you a few few extra bonus tweaks uh even before we started <laughs> recording but Absolutely. no it looks good and even even for me knowing you you know before webcam and and virtual calls it you seem more like yourself now so i'm guessing you're having more fun even with it too mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah it's, i think it's mostly like confidence now right um because even like I, I have these i have i have you know I'm a, I'm a i'm a gear guy so i got headphones and stuff and everyone every once in a while people are like oh your headphones don't work and then i'm like okay well let me f switch this with me and i'm constantly trying to like up make everyone happy so it feels good to have a professional setup that I know just works all the time and I can rely on it. That is a big thing. And it's hard to explain because you can't always write it in specs, but investing in good equipment like reduces mm -hmm. the friction. You know, when mm -hmm. you buy good gear that just works mm -hmm. and you don't have to troubleshoot it every couple times, you know, it's, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm like such a big believer on spending the money on good RGB bulbs because I used to buy <laughs> the cheap ones and it was like every other day you had to reconnect the app and go. And it's just like most people don't have time. And if yeah. you have webinars and other things going on, you don't have 10, 15 minutes, you know, to exactly. reset up. So it's great that it's a turnkey. And I even you mentioned something before when we were talking how you were excited for this because you felt like even there's a little bit of a job security. It, you were mm -hmm. saying just like with your job, you if they're trying to get people to come back in the office, you could say, well, you know, I have this set up at home. Mm -hmm. You know, I even have something better than mm -hmm. in the office. So have you noticed anything yet with your job changes? I mean, it's only been a couple of weeks other than just enjoying it more, but I don't know if there's any been differences with you know, that. I definitely think it's, it's helped with my personal brand, which I think goes along with what you're talking about. So you know, I've been, engage with folks on LinkedIn, doing videos with them and, and all that stuff. So it's allowed me to grow my, my personal brand and ensure, to your point, right? Like when someone needs me, I could quickly jump on a call. It's turnkey. And I know like management really appreciates how quickly you're able to jump in and start the conversation versus having to find a conference room or having to, you know, do all that stuff, do all the logistics, right? Yeah. Customer has a problem, has an escalation. 
okay, what's the number? Jump on, done. Right. Yeah. And you mentioned even getting, you know, upgrading to another camera or even using your phone. I think that's great mm -hmm. for the webinars, workshops, and even pre recorded content because now you have multiple cameras. You know, if you wanted to right. have even the webcam that might not be the best looking or your favorite, you could set that up as an angle to do a side shot or maybe you're mm -hmm. somewhere else on your screen and you could have it framed so it looks like you're looking right at them. I think there's a yeah. lot of ways to get creative with that too. Yeah, and I think that you actually had a post on on LinkedIn about being able to switch camera angles using OBS or using a tool like OBS. And um, I think that's the next phase in this because a lot of times I'm like drawing or sketching or, or you know, trying to understand the problem uh, and to be able to quickly just cut over and have people see that and help them understand, okay, this is the flow that I understood you to explain and being able to do that seamlessly and, and have my notes and, and just have almost like better transparency in the conversation instead of having it be like, almost like gated, right? Like, yeah. oh, let me share my screen. Let me. <laughs> yeah, there's like a, the more almost free flowing, the more you can make it feel like what it was before the pandemic, right? right. Before right. we were doing this on the computer. And, and I had this great interview. Uh, his name's Michael Forrest. He, he has this company, Squares TV. I'll send you the link, especially mm -hmm. if you have an iPad, but he has, he makes one of the apps or softwares that you can use your phone on as a webcam and then you have full manual controls you go on a web browser you change everything and then he has all these other extras but the one that was really cool i found was you take your ipad and it just wirelessly connects as a device and you can be drawing on it so like if i'm oh, talking wow. to you right now and let's say i'm talking about maybe something in the window i don't like instead mm -hmm. of just pointing and doing all that i could without like losing you know i could draw mm -hmm. something i can have like these quick uh things where you touch and swipe I, I don't know i'm not familiar too much i haven't played with the ipad version but like you can have just like preloaded text that would pop up you know oh, okay. so it's a cool tool well, yeah i mean there's just so let, many yeah. options i want to i want to check that out because i that's what i do constantly okay hey we have we have this technical thing okay let me draw that down okay where's that connected to i'm i'm sketching all the time that'd be a great resource yeah there. yeah and there's i mean i think it's it's easy as you know as someone being tech and into into the gear it's easy to complicate it that's why i feel like you know with with you it's like let's just get the base where we're at you know it yep. looks great and now we can just slowly layer in iterate yeah. if you're trying to learn how to set up lights and and even just the hardware mm -hmm. and you're dealing with new software that, i mean it's very easy to just things will yeah. go wrong you know yeah absolutely that's so. why I, I, I like your approach where we kind of get get that base and then iterate and then constantly improve on it. Yeah, man. Well, do you, I mean, I think you're on your way. I don't know. I, I don't know if you had any more questions for me before we wrap up just the final final reveal here. But it looks great, man. I really think you're you're on to a great start there. Thanks. No, I really appreciate it. And, you, and your little tips have been really helpful with, you know, understanding my lights a little bit better. How do they work? Right? Because I'm getting from like, it's, I'm making this not white. Why is it brighter? You know, it's confusing. Uh, and then being able to have the Word doc and just, how to set everything up. It's been really, you know, those little, I think those little tips go really, really far. So I appreciate you always dropping them in. Dude, always here. Yeah, definitely, definitely reach out, reach out if you need anything for sure, man. And thank you again. Thanks for taking the time to come on the, the show multiple times and, and work through it. It was, it was fun to get through the process, but I'm, I'm pumped about where we're at and definitely Me reach too. out when you're ready to upgrade that camera. We'll finish it off here. <laughs> we'll do, man. No, absolutely. Cool, man. And that wraps up this episode of On Camera, On Brand. If you found any value in this episode, please consider subscribing and be sure to check out our past episodes to level up your on-camera setup. Thanks for checking out On Camera, On Brand. This episode is produced by Motion, a podcast agency that helps B2B organizations create their own shows. If you enjoyed what you learned, check out more episodes at motionagency.io slash on camera, on brand.